major standout moment was yeah. when uh, Nikki Bella broke the Divas Championship title reign record, mm-hmm. the longest reign ever. I was the bodyguard or the the bouncer for yeah. there and mm-hmm. big celebration party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was another one moment where you're, you know, I didn't do anything. I just stood there with a suit and sunglasses on, looked like a yeah, you know, a douchebag. And yeah, everyone's right. like, "Oh, hey, we know that guy." Blah blah blah. And it's just a cool moment. It's like the moment that wow. I think there was a celebration with like the CZW guys were there, the Dojo guys were doing. I think for Drew Gulak or somebody or all there in the crowd, you know, at a for a celebration yeah. for somebody. You know, good old Drew is really awesome, though. You know. <clears throat> yeah. And so <coughs> going back to it, it, it's cool to see your friends on there, and then it's it's cool to be there. Yeah. And you know, you're not guaranteed uh, an actual thing while you're there, and it's awesome to be there. But then, even for that brief moment, if you're just on TV mm-hmm. for this giant corporation like WWE, and yeah. they have people bring you out and recognize you and be so like proud and happy that you're there, yeah, it's an awesome, surreal mm-hmm. feeling. It is. It's that's so cool. I remember when I was a uh, I remember Christmas time one year, I got lucky, you know, I got lucky. I was in New York City. Remember when they had the restaurant, WBF restaurant, WWA? Yeah. You know, and like my sister and I went, went, got it, went in line, and they said, we're going to be taping live tonight. I'm like, uh, okay. So, you know what I mean? Not knowing what's going on. It was a live show from Raw, you know, or Sunday Night Heat, good old Sunday Night Heat back in the day, you know? And I'm sitting by, oh, I remember those, yeah. <laughs> sitting by Taz and Michael Cole, doing commentary. You know, I'm right there in the pub. You can see me wearing like the logo WWF, WWF hat at the time. You know, and uh, like it was just funny because it was like the time I, I think Christian was the guest, Christian, edgy Christian, and then it was the Stone Cold Booker T in the supermarket bit. Okay, yeah, yeah, and and. Uh, like me and Taz were just having a blast. Like we we're like naming Ric Flair moves and shit. You know, just funny. You know, and then like saying paper, yeah. paper, paper, or plastic as he's uh, you know checking Booker through the you know the checker. You know, it was funny. <laughs> so I was like my only big fame. And then like maybe fifteen minutes, I could say I was part of the wrestler. How's that? Be, <laughs> being in the crowd, being in the crowd for, in Rawway, New Jersey, for uh, you know. Wow. I know. So that's my theme. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, that's something. That's the beautiful thing yeah. about professional wrestling that I love. It's, you know, mm-hmm. whether you're just there to witness it in person or yes. somehow you're incorporated into it just to be a part of that magic that yeah. pro wrestling has. And, and, I'm, and I'm a local fan like CZW. You know, I'm a front row fan. I get in. You know, I'll heckle with the crowd. You know, I'm always on DVDs, and it's always fun, though. You know what I mean? It's all for fun. Yeah. You know, it's great. It's just great to get in the face of wrestlers. Like, I got in the face of, uh, oh, who the hell? Actually, at the uh, CCW's Cage of Death, it was uh, an NWA world title match. We had no clue what the hell was going on that night, you know? With uh, <laughs> with uh, Nick, e- Nick Aldez, or whatever his name is, you know, from TNA, and... Uh, yeah. So I got in his face. I was like, fuck you, you know. <laughs> You're nothing, buddy. <laughs> you know. Uh, and, you know, sometimes we, we, we appreciate that. Sometimes it's fun to get those reactions out of. Yeah, I know. Um, if you're a diehard fan. Exactly. Or if you're someone in, like, your position, you know, we, we, we feed off of that. Yeah. It's fun. And then other times. There's yeah. guys out there that do that just because they want to try to quote steal the show and it's just annoying. Yeah, I know. Um, we 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 experienced that at Bushido. Yeah. Um, this past week, and there's this one, and, and I found out afterwards he considers himself an actual wrestler. But yeah, this is a, a guy who yeah. does some of the other quote shows yeah. in the area who yeah. paid the, the buy ticket, comes into the show, yeah. and then. Yeah, you know, you're trying to get the reactions from the fan as a whole, and he's just back there like, "Oh, f this! Oh, you guys suck!" Blah blah blah, blah. and it's just like, "Yeah, dude, dude, too much. Just calm down." Yeah, I know. You'll get those fans. There, yeah, there's so many of those these days. It's like you really just, you know, they like plant themselves. Yeah. You know, they want to plant themselves. You know, it's just weird. Wrestling these days, it's just so much different now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, and there's, there's so many styles. I know. And I've worked 
I've worked a lot of different styles, especially mm-hmm. you know in the past couple of years. Yeah. Because um, with where I trained, I learned a more formal traditional mm-hmm. route. Yeah. Of how to be a wrestler, and it was about making things count, the story, the you know the, the moves and stuff. But it was like yeah. a, it was more like the WWE style. Mm-hmm. Everything had a purpose. Yeah. And then I go. To Tennessee, yeah. Uh, I worked in Tennessee mainly for a year because I was under Burt Prentice and mm-hmm. uh, love him or hate him. He, you know, he's a big name in the wrestling business. He, he's prestigious when it comes to yeah. the things he's done for mm-hmm. uh, wrestlers. A lot of big names you see, yeah. He, he's had a hand in their career somehow, yeah. And he's helped me a lot, but you know, he worked mainly in the Nashville area mm-hmm. where. Uh, it, 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 I know Nashville, like, well, Tennessee's picking up with the times a little bit, but at that moment, yeah. it was more of that slow based Memphis style. Yeah. That was completely different for me. Yeah. But then now, I'm working for shows like Bandit, Prodigy, RWA, yes. yeah. um, Big- you know, Bushido, where it's, mm-hmm. you know, when I worked for Rockstar for a while last year, yeah. it, it's about that high impact, high velocity, like, what's going to captivate the crowd. Right, right. Uh, mm hmm. You know, I don't want to say get your shit in, but yeah. it, it was those moments where it was like, you know, putting your athleticism out there more or less than mm-hmm. just getting, um, you know, the story that, oh, he did this to so-and-so. Mm-hmm. It was more about, hey, we're athletes. This is what we can do. Yeah. And it, it is, it's cool to experience each style, and it's hard at the same time to adjust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um because going from my, you know, traditional style, I'll say it that way, traditional, yes. to Memphis yeah. was hard because I was moving, you know, I wanted to go, go, go. Yep. But they were like, no, nope, slow, slow, slow. Slow, you got to take, yeah. Going, yeah, then going from Memphis back to the, the tr- traditional slash indie style, like, man, it, it's unrealistic. And it, it's a hard transition, but it makes, it puts you, it puts an aspect on, your athleticism and your abilities that, you know, there's so many different styles and ways to go about that. Mm-hmm. And there's still so much to learn and progress as a performer and a wrestler. Yeah. That you, you know, for me, I just want to be good all around. I yeah. don't want to be this flippy, spotty guy. All no, around. no, no, no. But I don't want to be this slow Memphis, hey, I'm going to stand here for a minute and clap <laughs> my hands until I get the crowd to... Right, down. right, right, right. I know how that is, and you're like, okay, really? I want to show you something, kids. Watch this, right? You know? Watch this. Yeah. Boom. And, uh, that's, and that's, as far as right now, that's why I love working yeah. uh, for companies like RWA, because yeah. they're that perfect blend of everything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they they want the elaborate stories that keep the yes. fans drawn and happening, but they also want... You to go out there and mm-hmm. captivate and wow with your ability. How's how's the crowds there? You got good 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 sized crowds for those that show. Oh, we, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. We've been, you know, on average, uh, it's a small space, but on yes. average, it's yeah. back two to two to three hundred people. Which that's pretty you good. Know, given the venue, yeah, yeah. Given the venue, that's a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And if I I fully believe that they found a bigger venue, right? They could draw more. What's what's the but, could I ask what was the hor- horriblest crowd you've ever seen? <laughs> like, like I'm sure you've seen 15, 15 people in a crowd, probably like five, you know, 10 people. You ever go to a venue that's like really dead? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've worked. Yeah. Um, well, I, got, I got two scenarios with yeah. that, a good and a bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll do the bad first. Go ahead. The, the, the bad, I was in Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, I was doing a triple shot that weekend. Yeah. So I, I think I was looking, I was traveling with Chase Stevens. So mm-hmm. we did Burr Prentice. Um, uh, we did Burr Prentice Friday night. Yeah. Uh, around the Nashville area. Yeah, yeah. Then we drove down to um, a little bit past Atlanta. Yeah. And, uh, and George uh, for Robert Gibson. We did his crowd. Mm-hmm. And they were great. Yeah, yeah. And then we drove back up to Tennessee to do a Burt Prentice show again. Yeah. And I um, I worked Chris Michaels mm-hmm. that night. 
And there was only about 12 people. Oh, my God. We had a great match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had a great match. Yeah. You know, technical, just flow, everything yep, was yep. perfect. But the crowd was just kind of like, nah. You know, they weren't really into it. No. But then again, yeah. uh, we'll, go, we'll go back about a year before that. Yeah. I was just about 40 minutes north of where I live in yeah. Fort Branch, Indiana, where mm. uh, Tracy Smothers is from. Yes. I was... There in a little gymnasium. Yeah. That I mean, there was only twelve people there as well. <laughs> right. But I was working. I was working with my best friend JP Lightning, uh-huh. and we had such a great match. Yeah. Uh, especially for me being as green as I was, I'm yeah. only probably yeah. a little over a year in the business at that point. Mm-hmm. We had such a great. That was like my first great match. Yeah. But you wouldn't have thought there was only 12 people in there. No, no. They were drawn into it. They were excited. Yeah, yeah. Everything went smoothly. You know, they were yelling, this is awesome. <laughs> the, the, we could see the guys on the sideline saying, this is awesome. Uh, uh, right outside the locker room. And even the ref came up to us at one point, the guy just saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, That's so cool. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's one of those things, like whether there's 12 people or 200 people. Yeah. If, if the crowd's into it, then it's a good crowd regardless. Sure. So yeah, you want to see more numbers. Yes. I performed in front of a couple hundred people before, and they just don't really care. No, no, no. But then you, you're you like, perform in front of 12 people, and they're going crazy, like, you know, yeah. it's WrestleMania. Yeah, I know. It's great, though. Like, But sometimes those intimate, you know, those little shows get big. They don't realize, you know? Right. And you know, that's like the cool thing about being with startup companies like Bandit yes. Wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the first, uh, when they relocated, the first couple shows were a little low, but then each show, you know, the crowd's doubling. The yeah. crowd's getting more into it, and that's what you want to see. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what lets you know that you're doing your job well, when uh, the crowd gets bigger and the crowd gets more yeah. involved, whereas, mm-hmm. hey, every show is only 12 to 20 people, and they're kind of meh throughout the whole thing, then it's like, okay, this isn't working, either you stop or you, mm-hmm. you know, figure something else out. Yeah, 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 yeah. You ever been to like a really run down wrestling fit, you know, like a real, like, you know, like a crappy bingo hall, you know, like, like, like a hall, you know, like, like a, Oh my gosh. Yeah, um, probably. I'm sure. I'm sure like a couple of like yeah. little VFW halls that are like hold like 10 people, you know? Yeah. No, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I spent about uh, eight months working for a company in yeah. Illinois yeah. that before they, before they got kicked out as in a VFW hall right. and they moved to it. A gymnasium, yeah. but it was a jank, run-down, gross <laughs> Oh, gymnasium. man. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 and then yeah. Um, I, had, well, I had another one in, in mind that I worked. Oh, yeah. I went to Kentucky yeah. well, one time, and it was at a fair. Yeah. And the like community center that we performed in, it was dirty. It was grimy. The oh, locker rooms right. were very aged and stuff. And mm-hmm. hell, even the ring. The ring was missing a post or two, oh, or like a board or two. <laughs> oh wow! Uh, that, I mean, there was a pretty big gap. Yeah. In um, the metal I were on one side, and I was just like, ah, this is sketchy. Yeah. This, this is really All right, sketchy. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> I don't want to be here. Sorry. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, why'd you even bother taking the trip, right? <laughs> I was gonna like, oh, it's yeah. gonna be a great night, but uh, we'll see. You know. <laughs> yeah. You know. I've 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 been to a lot of like those local shows and you're just like oh, this is this is grimy and you're like you said it's all just disgusting you know but nowadays it's, yeah. but nowadays it's real there's some really nice established you know places like gyms are beautiful like you know like places yeah. like even these sports centers you know like these sport rec centers and you know there's tons of yeah. that. Well, <laughs> I remember there, there have been a couple of times yeah. I performed at like rodeo stadiums where uh-huh. uh, there was one time I went down to a Kentucky show with Tracy Smothers. Yeah. And it, it was at like this actual like fair ground where we were in the middle of the stadium, but it was like yeah. a rodeo stadium. So the ground was mud. Right. The rings in the middle thing uh, of this like mud field. Mm-hmm. And they had. Um, like plywood, right? Just scattered that you're supposed to walk to the ring as like your entrance and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was one of those moments. Like it, it was weird too because 
because you're in the middle of this mud field, mm-hmm. all the fans are in the stadium. So they're still like 50 feet away from you. Yeah. And you're trying to say, you know, I'm a good guy. He's a heel. And do these 